Hashimoto's Thyroiditis, the Big Picture Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a disease of the immune system. This is a known and accepted fact. The immune system has two sides. On the right, you will see the innate or nonspecific immunity. On the left is the acquired or adaptive immunity. Sompeyrak, in her 2012 book, How the Immune System Works, describes the two sides. You are born with innate immunity, while adaptive immunity is your immune system's adjustment for a different situation, i.e. adaptation, based on what antigens your body has been exposed to at any given time. Innate is like the wall of the city. It can defend all attackers and it is not specifically targeted for a particular pathogen. When it needs assistance, it signals the other side of our immune system, the adaptive or specific immunity. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an adaptive response to what the immune system believes is a foreign substance attacking your body. Unfortunately, the white blood cells are mistakenly treating normal healthy tissue of the thyroid as something foreign. The body then begins to produce antibodies against the perceived invader. Antibodies produced in an autoimmune disease are known as autoantibodies. In people with Hashimoto's, the most common antibodies are the thyroid peroxidase antibodies, or TPO. As the thyroid cells are destroyed, production of thyroid hormones, triiodothyronine, T3, and thyroxine, T4, are reduced. Since there are lower levels circulating in the body, the negative feedback loop is telling the hypothalamus to release more thyrotropin-releasing hormone, or TRH, which triggers the pituitary gland to release more thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH. Unfortunately, the thyroid gland cannot keep up. TSH stimulates hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the thyroid uh, gland. Every single cell in your body relies on thyroid hormone, specifically T3, to do its job. Thyroid hormone determines how quickly your body uses oxygen and calories from food to produce the energy cells need to do their jobs. It is critical in regulating the speed at which individual cells function, also known as basal metabolic rate, or BMR. As you can see, if it is important at the cellular level, it will then affect major systems of the body. Normally, a function, functioning thyroid would ensure proper growth and development, aid in proper muscle functioning, ensure the heart, which is a muscle, pumps effectively and efficiently, ensures the gastrointestinal system is able to digest and excrete food properly, strengthens hair, skin, and nails, aids in the development of the brain, aids in the growth of strong bones, ensures proper development of the body's organs. Due to its critical importance, you can see how even the slightest increase or decrease in hormone levels can affect your overall wellness. In Hashimoto's thyroiditis, if the thyroid is no longer producing as much thyroid hormone, the body adapts by slowing down all bodily functions. Symptoms include feeling sluggish, depressed, brain fog, memory loss, weight gain, intolerance to cold, as the function of the thyroid decreases, the symptoms across all of these symptoms or systems increases. There are many factors that have been implicated as triggers in causing the immune system to no longer be able to tell the difference between foreign and self. However, nothing has been proven with 100% certainty. As discussed earlier in the paper, the following factors may play a role. Gender. According to the American Thyroid Association, more than 12% of Americans will develop a thyroid condition during their lifetime, and currently an estimated 20 million Americans have some form of thyroid disease, with women five to eight times more likely than men to have thyroid problems. Genetics. Autoimmune disease runs in families. If a family member has an autoimmune disorder, there is a higher chance that you may develop an autoimmune disorder, although it may not be the exact same one. 
Chistiakov has discussed this at length in his article, Immunogenics of Hashimoto's Thyroiditis. Chemical toxins. Chemical contamination of the environment, for example, pesticides, play a significant role in allergies and autoimmune disorders. Research proves that these harmful chemicals cause a shift in the balance of the immune system. Metal toxins. High levels of metals in the system are associated with autoimmune conditions. Heavy metals such as mercury found in amalgam or metal fillings can attach to collagen tissue in those individuals with autoimmune conditions. When heavy metals are present in the tissue, the body sees them as not self and mounts an immune attack. Leaky gut. The lining of the intestinal tract becomes permeable when the tight junctions separate, allowing food particles into the body. This flares autoimmune conditions, which further damages the gut lining, according to Dr. Kazarian in his book in, uh, that was published in 2010. The top foods to cause allergies and intolerances are gluten, corn, soy, dairy, peanuts, sesame, sugar, grains, tree nuts, fish, shellfish, eggs, or any food eaten in excess over time. And this was proven in uh, a study by Guandalini and Newland in 2011. The body responds to these various factors by launching an adaptive immune response. In order to begin the road to healing, you first must address the interferences and remove them. In Isabella Wentz's book, Hashimoto's Thyroiditis, Lifestyle Interventions for Finding and Treating the Root Cause, she recommends to eliminate the triggers, restore depletions, and reestablish the gut function. The first step is to eliminate the triggers, which can run the gamut of infections, iodine, gluten, food intolerances, fluoride, and other toxins. It may take time to, to discover and figure out what these are. Removing them will help quiet your immune system and reduce damage to your thyroid. The next step is to provide optimal nutrition to restore nutrient depletions. Hashimoto's leads to poor extraction of minerals and vitamins. The lack of sufficient thyroid hormones makes nutrient extraction more difficult and less efficient. Eat a wide range of nutrient-dense food and talk with your endocrinologist and nutritionist about supplementation with B12, zinc, selenium, ferritin, thyroid hormones, and digestive enzymes. The third step is to re restore gut health. Bacterial overgrowth, candida overgrowth, gut di dysbiosis, and adrenal dysfunction may take a while to stabilize. Wentz recommends bone broths, glutamine, and re-inoculation with probiotics and fermented foods. The following references were used in creating this presentation. Thank you.